So, it's late. I'm tired. I was about to go to bed, but then, uh, it just suddenly hit me, like, from nowhere. The Battle of Blackfire Pass was released today. Fifteen hours ago. Whew, better watch it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to freak my shit. I'm going to be a fucking schoolgirl looking at her senpai. I am going to flip my shit. Sega. There better be unit collision. If there's not unit collision, fuck no. Wait, Welcome to our you? first demo walkthrough for Total War Warhammer. What you're about to see is a scripted version of the battle for Blackfire Pass, a set-piece quest battle between the Empire and the Greenskins. The game is very much a work in progress at this stage, Woo! but we hope you'll enjoy Dang having tanks. a look at how it's all coming together. Mm. Love you. I don't like how they're all now red. Is the time, men of the Empire, to unite, for the Orcs gather. Beyond the pass, a war boss draws to him all that is foul. An Orc horde beyond imagining. As Sigma thought, so shall we. We will become part of the legend. We will wipe the Orcs from our door! And only when this is done, when scope. our nation has healed, shall I take up Gal Maraz for Sigma, for the Empire, for the Warhammer! So that was Emperor Karl Franz giving his rousing pre-battle speech. Oh, he's shit! He's one of these legendary lords, so he's a powerful general and a mighty warrior in his own right. Playing a campaign as the Empire, you'll unlock this particular quest battle as Karl Franz levels up. Woo, hell blasters! So the Empire's fielding a lot of artillery. Oh, hell battle, rocket! It's worth noting uh, that you won't just be able to recruit all of this stuff right from the start of the game. There are quite a few late game units on show here today. And the same goes for spells as well. You'll see a lot of kind of late game, high level stuff. Is that Grimgore? Is that Grimgore Iron Fist? Iron, Iron Ham. Fuck, I don't. Oh, Savage Orcs. Now, as we approach the Greenskin line, you can see just how different these two races are. The armies from Warhammer Fantasy Battles give us so much diversity to work with. The playable race in the game are going to look and play really, really differently in both campaign and battle. Oh, this is so beautiful. Oh, Ragnaroks. Ar Ragnarok? Fuck. I, um, I, I, I can't think. I can't think come up with the names. I'm just so amazed. I know I'm going to get a lot of names wrong because I just... And looking out over the fire pass for a second here, you can just see the kind of fantastical landscapes I'm not an orc that we've never either. been able to do before in a I'm total Empire. war game. And this is just one geographical part of the old world. This is the greenskin race leader Grimgor Ironhide. He's accompanied by the Immortals, his hard as nails band of black orc oh, bodyguards. They're beautiful. He's also brought an orc shaman into battle with him, so we'll see him throwing some spells around in a bit. Grimgor looks awesome! He's so killy. Oh shit. I notice how they're all moving in formation. These snickering Did they little bring back the thing where you just click catapult. and they move in formation? Now you can see a goblin fanatic there climbing into the mechanism eagerly with his homemade wings strapped to his arms. Cause and as it fires, you can opt to take first person control of the Doom Diver and pilot him to his doom. Now, it's a pretty Because in like medieval, you, it, you, you can, can really set your guys efficient. up and you just clicked the move button and they moved in formation. But they changed that in Shogun and I don't know why. It never made any sense because when you clicked move in that game, they became a line. It was so that's stupid. another spellcaster right here. This is a goblin shaman. You can see him riding his wolf there. So he casts spells from the Little Wa magical lore. Oh, oh, oh! That was good. Oh, hand gunners! Was that blood I saw? No, you're supposed to move your swords up to cover the hand gunners. Stupid fucker! And look, you have curved terrain. You can put your hand gunners on the back so they fire over. That's why you have curved terrain. You put the melee on the lower terrain and reins on the. Whoever made this is fucking idiot. Where the Empire player, you suck. 
So there's a bit of a flanking counter-attack lining up here from the Empire. We've got some ranged cavalry up front there in the shape of Outriders and Pistoliers. Coming up behind them, we have the noble Imperial Knights oh, of the Reichsguard and a unit of Reichsguard are in the game! He's a super heavy there shock cavalry some... on vicious, monstrous mounts. There was so some worry that the pounding. Reichsguard wouldn't so be really in the game longer because we haven't seen pictures of them. But fucking Reichsguard! I hate that I'm doing a StarCraft Let's Play. I kind of want to play the, um... The Warhammer mod for Medieval 2. I kind of don't like the projectile trail. To... So the Goblin Shaman here has just cast a spell called the Curse of Dabad Moon. Now it's a pretty powerful, impressive looking high end spell, but it's worth noting that we don't want magic to be too OP. You'll have a limited pool of magic to use in every battle that recharges over time according to various factors. But basically you're gonna have to pick and choose just when to cast high level spells like this. We don't want magic to totally dominate the game, it's more of a kind of useful supporting tool. So the demis are going in now and you can see just the beautiful handcrafted animations at work here. I mean, you can see that throughout the battle. One thing that we're still working on is cavalry versus cavalry impact. And in fact, it's beautiful. across the board. So Fucking beautiful. What we're aiming for is scenes like this to be much more punchy with more physical hit reactions from the cavalry that struck. In short, we want to make a real kind of spectacle of these engagements. Is there a fucking unit collision? Oh! Because if there's not, I, I can't tell. I'm tired and I'm not, I, I'm so hyped. I'm not really paying attention to the technicals. Helberdeers, my favorite unit. My favorite unit, Helberdeers. So panning down the line here, you can see just how dynamic our infantry charges. No, hold still, I want to see if there's collision. into the fray, defenders physically bracing for impact. You've got AOE attacks going off from large characters. That's Grimgor Ironhide there, getting stuck in with his big magical axe. And in go the trolls at the end of the line here. Now, monstrous infantry like this have, have oh. you know, lots and lots of hit points. They can meet out a ton of damage with those big attacks as well. And these guys are also, as you can see, partial to puking acid bile all over their enemies. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah, that's how you do it. Handgunners in the second line. A fucking... I think it's called a Ragnarok or Ragna Spider or something. Oh, aerial fighting! No, go back. I want to see it. I, I can't decide what to look at. Carl Franz on the battle in front of me. A bit of aerial combat going on here between Deathclaw and the Wyvern. Now, yeah. if you gain mastery of the skies in a battle like this, you can then use the maneuverability of your flying units to strike pretty much anywhere on the battlefield. He wins. Death Claw, best Griffin. Oh, geez, that's the Wyvern comes down here to, to attack these state troopers. You can see how each of these big monsters has some really spectacular combat animations. It really brings them to life and gives them tons of character. One thing I don't like is the overuse of kill animations because it slows down the fighting. Just, just hit it! Now, just these are two hit of the Empire's hero characters. This is the warrior priest and just beyond him there, the witch hunter. And a witch Heroes hunter? Heroes are essentially agents so they can roam the campaign map. Oh, look at that witch hunter. Functions, but they're also powerful solo warriors in their own right. Oh! Attach them to an army. Dude! They can then throw just themselves into the combat. the hammer down. Troops. Got freaking, uh, swine handers. Or I forget what they're called in tabletop. He didn't even get to do anything. He just went down like a bitch. So this is the Orc Shaman casting one of the spells from the Big War uh, magical lore. Uh, so he's casting the Foot of Gork here, which is he's literally summoning the Orc god Gork to stamp his enemies into the dust, which is, as no! you can see, bad news for the Luminarch and the Steam Not Tank the nearby. Not the Steam Tank. I love them. Not so much as hell, but ears. Four units. My favorite. Greatsword Bodyguard, that's what they're called. Ugh. I don't know if they're Greatsword Bodyguard, I forget. Oh. Where's Mr. Samwise Ganji when you need him? 
Dude, the, this guy is not managing his musketeer as well. Oh, they are swiping at it. No kill animations. Yeah. I'm so fucking happy. De 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 Death Claw's just sitting there. He he's not doing much. Fucking spiders. Oh, I hate them. And finally, the Empire's Celestial Wizard I almost is summoning down wizard. the Comet of Cassandora. Oh! Uh... Who won? So, thanks. Okay. Uh, ooh, it looks so good. And I want to talk more about it, but I'm also really... It's it's really late for me. I gotta go to bed. I get up in the morning. But uh, all right. That was pretty good. I I want to give more thoughts on it. I want to say that I think it's going to be good. That I I have high hopes, but at the same time, it was a scripted battle. It was gameplay. They may, they're actually doing a good job of this, about you know telling you what is just in cinematic engine, and what's actual gameplay. It is gameplay, but it's kind of scripted. It I think there was a unit collision. I'd have to go back and look again. But like I said, unit collision is a big important thing. And uh, about units maintaining formations during fights, because one of the things I've hated. It's how units just break formation when a fight happens. See, we can't, uh... See, we can't... Okay, well, we can't use the trolls, because they're fucking trolls. They just burst right through. Uh, those guys didn't really stand a chance. A bit of aerial combat going on here between Deathclaw and the Wyvern. Now, if you gain mastery the disguise in a battle like this, you can then use the maneuverability to Okay, okay, you. let's look. They are... They are maintaining formation. That mostly. I mean, okay. It, unlike in other games, it's it's kind of understandable here. The orcs are bigger, stronger. They could just burst through the first line of your unit pretty easily. So I, this kind of game, I'm willing to to forgive the you know breaking formations a lot easier, especially with the units like trolls and stuff. But it looks like they are mostly maintaining formation. And it looks like there's a bit of unit collision. So it looks like they're doing better. And magic seems to be working pretty well. I, I've, I've said this before and I'm going to keep saying it. I think CA really needs to do this fantasy game. For their own sake. It's... You know when you do something over and over and over again, it becomes monotonous and boring, and you just don't put your all into it? I think that's what's been happening to CA. They've done so much history, so much of the basically the same shit over and over again, that finally getting a universe with some new, some magic, some monsters, can really bring the excitement back. It can really bring the enthusiasm. Is it that bad? But it can really, you know, get you interested again. Willing to try new stuff. You know, try to make... Just make it work. Because you generally want to see it work. Not just because it's a job. I think the introduction of fantasy could be a real kick they need. Anyways, that was fucking cool. And I'll be seeing you next time. I'm going to bed.